stock goes up, somebody would make gigantic amounts of money, and society would kind of celebrate that. So, does it mean that you know his process is right? I mean, I I don't know the answer. I mean, it's uh, it's a question I, back I to you, right? From where you are coming at, but then you know I'll highlight that uh, less than point one percent people get into IITs or you know AIMS or whatever field you. You know, choose like with with the population of our size, probably not even point one percent would achieve something in their lives. Maybe one percent or two percent would be successful on their own, not parents' money, but one or two per, uh, person would you know do something on their own. So uh, everything is a tail risk in our country, right? Yeah. So so that's one point. The other point is you know you talked about a top down approach, like uh, somebody doing extensive research, right? Yes. Now yeah. let's let me let me. say everyone's situation is different but that's a little vague now let me let me give you why it is different so uh, even if i have a 90% chance right of uh, being right on one of the things so let's say there are three decision points if the sector is going to do well and then uh, if the sub sector or something is going to do well and then if the stock is going to do, do well let's say there are three uh, three decision points now let's assume that each decision point is independent and you have a 90% chance of being right on each decision point even being 90% right on each of the decision point you have a 73% chance of being right right that's no, 0.9 no, into no, 0.9 no. So, so so you know if you so please bear with the quantic quantish kind of answer my point is you know people like us i mean who are who are who are probably uh, do not have the resources to do so much extensive uh, thing even if we have a 70% chance right on each decision point i mean it is kind of getting decayed right the uh, ultimately if the stock is going to do well so i don't think it, uh, everyone's situation is different but it's uh, you know uh, it's no, I, not I for people you like have, you have assigned yeah. the probabilities right yeah so so that that's my limited point that you know Uh, uh, from a risk reward point of view just betting on a few stocks is is not the right thing to do uh, because you know there would be some assets and because the world has opened up there are some assets like which have gone up if you look i mean the last 15 years like 1000 times or 10000 times right i mean uh, not everything can be you know judged uh, by doing the fundamentals right i mean Uh, we have seen that people who have been open uh, about bitcoins making so much money right i mean i had to come to bitcoins but i'm not promoting bitcoin or anything but but the, my limited point is this that you know there are assets which will give you outlier returns and those will have volatility uh, because that's how volatility is being measured but uh, you know that is good volatility right i mean if you want to capture outlier returns you will see the volatility of those will be being extremely high so i mean if you are trying to kind of optimize sharp ratio maybe it's not the right thing uh, uh, i mean you need to decide whether you need to optimize sharp ratio or you want to optimize your, or grow your wealth right i mean there are two completely different things so yeah i, I think i've made uh, spoken to but i'll just shut up right now No, Roy, uh, that's a good point uh, roy that you bring up is the objective of trying to capture outlier returns and even with that objective i think uh, you are hurting yourself if you do concentrated portfolios because you lower the possibilities of identifying that outlier if you if you concentrate yourself so i think even with the objective of trying to capture outlier returns uh the approach should not be concentrating yourself yes that's exactly what i think and i think uh, i just want to repeat one point that uh that you made in in that uh, twitter uh, thread uh, along these lines uh, also that uh, you you actually want to go the other way to capture uh, these outlier returns i i forget exactly what your what that what that yes. quote was but maybe you can uh, yeah i mean what i was saying is like if you have a part of your portfolio into something which you don't understand much i mean a very small amount right which the world doesn't understand much and the key is getting in early i mean uh, but there might be something which which is exceptional right i mean we have seen this again and again i mean uh, like some of the outliers 
give you more returns i mean then your allocation doesn't really matter the amount of money it makes the allocation becomes kind of gigantic so to capture those obviously you have to kind of invest in a lot of things like it's like investing in a startup right i mean if you invest in a startup you don't invest in just one startup right i mean you i mean uh, even a vc fund like would typically do 20 i mean correct me if i wrong if i'm wrong on the stats but they would at least invest in 20 startups right i mean because the game is like the unsystematic risk has to be hedged away diversified away so that you can get a uh, you know participation to outlier there's a chance of outlier return happening right so that was my point uh, prashant totally totally agree with that uh, prashant would you like to add something on this Not much, but basically, but actually, what Sandeep said about, uh, I mean, right? I mean, uh, Rakesh Junjunala, for example, I believe he invested around two point five to three percent of his net worth when he invested in Titan. I mean, even though at one point of time it may have been seventy percent of his net worth, but his initial investment was actually very small. I mean, he basically was, uh, I mean, adding a bet of one of the many of many bets kind of thing he was ha- having at that point of time. That. The only thing I, I think, uh, what we can take from that was that he allowed it to grow. I mean, he, I mean, if you ask any of the financial advisor, they say no, don't allow a stock to be, I mean, become a very large port- part of a portfolio because that can hurt when the the trend goes down, kind of thing. But I think he was able to carry on that portfolio. I mean, stock with a, maybe a 50, 60 percent. I mean, only recently or uh, his new listings have come up, which meant that. Uh, his uh, part of network of Titan has become lower. But for a long time, it was very high percentage. So I don't think, I mean, Kedia, I mean, look, end of the day, if you look at any of the international fund managers, two things come to me kind of thing. One, most of them started off in the micro cap or in small cap kind of thing. And then concentration. Now, as uh, I think Roy said, it's all about survivor bias as well that we do. We are looking at only the winners because we always like to read about the stories of the winners kind of thing. We, there are very few stories of people who lost big amount of money. I mean, LTCM, for example, that's the only one big story that we have. have. But there are plenty of winners who have lost big money trying to chase. And I mean, I, I've been in the stock blocking business for, I mean, had been in the business for quite some time. And I mean, look, end of the day, people, when they fail, it's not like they fail and they say, I mean, you, I think, uh, Ashutosh, I mean, I think you uh, said about IATs kind of thing, which is very true. The percentage of winners, I mean, you take a startup everywhere, it's a very minority that actually wins big. The majority don't win big uh, in that sense. But the point is that in the uh, financials, it makes a much bigger difference than in anything else. I mean, if you don't get IIT, in worst case, you will go for a BE and do, I mean, you'll have to do something in life. What I've seen in stock markets is that when people lose money, it makes a huge amount of difference in their own personal lives kind of thing. I mean, I, I, I from the dot-com bubble kind of thing, I can I have so many people I know who lost big money, lost assets kind of thing. I mean, some I know people who fled town, who know, I mean, there are guys even who killed themselves kind of thing. I mean, everything happens because basically this is something that is, it can be a spiral that People can't control once it goes in the spiral. I mean, they keep, I mean, it's like uh, digging uh, deeper. Uh, I mean, uh, once you find your ditch, you go, uh, then, uh, I mean, the uh, top process is to stop digging, but people dig and they finally quit. Most of them actually quit. I mean, I I came into the market in 97, kind of thing, 1997. There were 300 brokers, stock brokers in Bangalore Stock Exchange alone. I mean, we had around 27 stock exchanges in India. Bangalore had 300. It, it, it was not, uh, not one of the largest. We were one of the smallest kind of thing. Delhi was big. Calcutta was very big kind of thing. I mean, Bombay was the biggest at that point of time. Today, of the 300 members, I think less than 50 are actually involved in stock market itself. Almost all of them have dropped out. No one, I mean, I can only remember once, one whose son is there. I mean, the next generation has taken over kind of thing. Rest of the uh, stock broker, even the sons and daughters aren't willing to take all the business or want to get into stock market business. Forget about stock broking business. So it's a very tough game. Well, also way too low kind of thing. I mean, I think, I mean, my own thought process is that less than 5% actually make really decent money that makes sense kind of thing. I mean, we in Twitter, maybe all a very fine lot where well, we, I mean, we are all, always interacting with guys who have survived, who have been there for quite some time, who have been able to 
go through the cycles and stay alive kind of thing that ability to stay alive i think i mean you go back to cycles bro and uh, look at the people who are there i think very few actually are alive today i mean in terms of being in the market actively i mean passively being i mean having a uh, 50 shares of state bank of india on my ipo there will be people around but actively involved actively actually making it quite a, i mean a substantial part of the network i think is a so small a portion so i i mean I, my own thought process in the uh, i mean idea is to if you want to be in the long run concentrate i'm not i'm i'm all for concentration but should you concentrate to a extent of three per uh, stocks i mean look as long i mean we are we we are, we are uh, equating ourselves with a promoter and we are not we don't have any control of the company we don't have any control of the policies or the choices made by the promoters kind of thing we are hopefully hoping, hoping that we can sail in the same boat that a promoter does i mean if we had uh, caught on to adani it would have been wonderful but if we are caught on to adil ambani it would have been brutal kind of thing i mean finally it's a promoter who drives not us so as investors why should we why should i tag myself to a promoter where i don't have control i mean if i have control that's a different ball game altogether if i have some amount of control well and i mean if you take any of the big funds hedge funds kind of thing they want to get into board at least they have i mean the idea is to they say that they know how, how to influence the board kind of thing then you are talking about where i mean activist investing kind of thing where you have real you can say okay you want to i concentrate i know i can i mean if things go start going wrong i can replace the board or like i mean as the board not to take a negative decision kind of thing but we don't have we as small investors we have no clue about what the board is doing what what their objectives are whether their uh, objectives are in line with the markets or not so why take that risk i mean that's an enormous risk because for the uh, promoter it may be a small amount of money for us it will be all our money kind of thing and if you i mean if you so let's say you are learning for 10 years saving everything and you invested everything that that's a 10 year effort i mean if it goes off it's not coming back i mean it, i mean the mental damage that it can do and i've seen it done i mean it's not like i'm just talking about in thin air kind of thing i've seen the damage things can do when you know, things go happens are kind of thing things go i mean things that you one we would not have thought would happen kind of thing happen and it screws up the life like anything and nothing else kind of i mean i do i i am i am for i mean all the investors or i read a lot of investor books kind of thing trying to really understand their strategies their thought process but i don't think many of them or i mean we can follow any of them i mean the only thing i can follow is that most of them are being bullish is the only way but should you be like them in the terms of concentration i i mean again i i am I'm, i'm i'm not in that camp in that sense thank you prashant sandeep go ahead boss actually prashant just covered what i wanted to say uh, i said that only good example of concentration is mid cap uh, promoters <laughs> so prashant already covered so nothing more to add there and and uh, realistically they are concentrated because they have so much of inside not just insider information but uh, ability to to manipulate and maneuver uh, the company uh, in their interest that may or may not be uh, as prashant rightly said uh, aligned with the, with the market or with other investors uh, without uh, pointing that they are doing some fraud or sham or something but just that uh, uh, some a promoter might say that uh, i want to grow Uh, and not care about profitability because i have a 30 year uh, vision and for for next 5 years even if i grow uh, with with uh, lower margins or or even uh, negative margins um, i'm good uh, which will not be aligned with the market and and a small investor but over 30 years he will make uh, much bigger uh, gains which is uh, so so clearly uh, again as i said prashant covered that in the uh, the only good example of extreme concentration is uh, is mid mid cap promoters yeah i guess that that is not the the uh, the, the point uh, that uh, ashutosh was questioning about right it's more about uh, secondary market investment and um, i think uh, i think that's a good point that you actually want to be able to control the company's activities if you want to get that concentrated so thanks a lot thanks a lot 
right i will you know maybe explain a bit more about what uh, what he does okay so let's he, he tries to find out a sector with some headwinds sorry tailwinds like uh, you know the paper prices are going to rise or he has some macro research on that some some top down research then he goes deep down into a company he tries to find if a company is increasing its the capacity or unit that is going to perform so let's say uh, on a sugar mill if they are increasing ethanol or something so he he caught into that ethanol story he he understood the ethanol game he get caught into ethanol and he he found the companies that are going to have a good sizable market share into ethanol business and he understood the government policy of you know blending petrol into ethanol and all that kind of stuff he invested into sugar companies he, he made a lot of money so i'm not saying just you know buying any random company or uh, buying a company for a five years uh, horizon kind of thing it's more about buying a company just to play a specific event then get out of that company get into something else uh, you may not able to you know completely uh, influence a company but then you have an option to exit the company right you can always uh, sell your stock and it's not very difficult to sell a stock you can take a 10 15 20% uh, haircut and you can exit any amount of you know uh, shares that you want to dump so i i guess it's much more than that i'm not sure like uh, if your guys are you know getting my point or oh absolutely Ash- ashutosh i think uh, i think we've understood and uh, you brought across that the point of the company level market level uh, sector level analysis and i think uh, they, but you have to appreciate that there is some level of post fact uh, outcome that you know post fact uh, analysis that's involved over here as well because you are able to discuss this only after the fact that the person has been successful and that Absolutely. was the point that was being tried that was the point that was uh, being put across uh, you know along uh, survivorship bias right. so that's that's the that's the i guess the the, the counter point to uh, your your discussion on there absolutely but let's say i i take that i i understand that right but then in equity markets we are we are all here to you know on the hard, hardest work i'll say and it it's it, you know no not very easy to make literally a single penny in this market so if you are making money via any means if you say uh, option writing is easy or option buying is easy or even trading is easy but then the probability of making money via trading is you know next to nothing i mean it would be too much into zero <laughs> no i i absolutely uh, what what you are describing it's not i i don't think anybody is saying that or I, at least i am not saying that what you are describing is impossible the fact that it is possible uh is uh, you know it, it's not like you won't find any outliers of that sort you will and you should find outliers of that sort because this is a this is an activity of uh, geometric returns so you should i mean if you if you didn't find any outliers of that sort and that would be surprising as all the whole point of of having outliers but the question is that it's uh, it's 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 close to impossible to determine which person is going to end up being an outlier up front absolutely yes so we got tony also here tony would you like to add something on this uh i mean i think uh, prashant uh, both prashant sir added uh, uh, a significant lot and what they said i think it all comes down to survivorship bias uh, i'm just a data driven guy i've done a lot of testing on uh, survivorship bias free data sets momentum mean reversion machine learning based and all of that uh, and a few things i found are uh, you can do a your performance increases if you have a large selection of equities to choose from is one uh second is the more concentrated your portfolio the better the returns but also the third thing is the more concentrated your portfolio uh, your liquidation and drawdown risk increases exponentially as well so these three things are something i've noticed uh and i exclusively do derivatives trading and for myself uh i know that there are certain things i do that give me an edge honestly uh and i if i try to do that in uh, for equities 
Uh, I've tried to model just based on price data, based on a lot of fundamentals. But if you just look at, if you just try to fit a model for each year's performance uh, using fundamentals data and momentum data both, what you consistently see is what was important in 2010 is not the same as 2011, not the same as 2012. And the things that actually drove the market changed significantly year over year. So by the time I come up with some theory and a model and I invest my money, that, that thing is not true anymore. So I have no edge uh, when it comes to, I know nothing that nobody else knows. So the only companies that I do invest in are companies where my friends found it, my ex-colleagues found it, where I'm an advisor or a co-founder, only in those cases where I'm looking for exponential returns, where I have some say in the running of the company. But otherwise, uh, data tells you that both in terms of value and momentum, what worked one year doesn't work in the next. Right, uh, both the Prashans, I guess, run a momentum portfolio, like statistically and backtested and whatnot. So, what what are your thoughts on this momentum thing? So, uh, if, if uh, a strategy that runs for the last two years or three years, would it run for the next couple of years? We we have seen a couple of people on Twitter even who have who have their small cases and all. The backtest was good. The performance is not up to the mark. Uh, their private advice or whatever their returns were good for the last two three years or whatever we have the data and right now the returns are not as it was described so is it true for momentum also uh, i am not the expert here but i can tell you one thing is with these time horizons that you're speaking for i i have systems that can come up with very simple one or two rules at any given point in time that would have you know multiplied your wealth in the last two three years but it will not in the next two, three years. At any given point in time, I can come up with some logic that would have done great in the last two, three years, but most of it actually goes to shit in the next year or two. So you can always overfit. You know, if you come up with 10,000 rules, right, you can always find a couple of rules or combinations that will do great in the last two, three years. And sometimes I all, uh, honestly wonder if I just hire a good-looking girl and create these strategies and sell them on small case, or webinars of how to invest, I would have made a lot of money because I have a system that would come up with these rules for the last two, three years. I can sell you 500 systems right now that would have minted money in the last two, three years. <laughs> so what's the probability of finding the right system or getting a right system or making a system that, that would work or make, make significant, you know, alpha or money, whatever? I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay, that, that's an honest answer. No, but one thing I would say is everything goes back to survivorship bias. Like, if someone's testing systems, I mean, for India at least, I would say at least at least uh, freaking start with a survivorship free bias-free data set because everyone's testing on universes that are already listed. Uh, so you're always going to come up with good back tests no matter what. So. Right. So if anyone else would want to add on something, Vihan, Vivek, yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know if I agree with that, uh, Tony. I think um, maybe you're talking about like really short time frames, but uh, in terms of like a portfolio approach based on momentum or some of the other uh, factors, these have been like tested over many, many decades of data, right? And both in sample, out sample. So... Some of these phenomena have like stood the test of time and um, I mean, there's like a logical reason that can be derived for why momentum would work very well in India also being a, like a high um, high beta market, right? So I, I'm not sure like if you're talking about overfitting based on like shorter time frames or you're talking about like um, like a portfolio selection over longer time frames. Uh, no, I was only talking of one-year holding periods, uh, investing based on, let's say, I, I train a model to come up with, uh, you know, next year returns based on a lot of fundamental factors. Uh, one thing you could definitely say is that the, the features that actually drive next year returns have changed consistently year over year from 2010 to 2018. That's what I've noticed. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not talking of actually evaluating businesses 
qualitatively and or qualitatively for longer term holding periods yeah so that's not my experience i think the in sample versus out of sample has been pretty um pretty similar in terms of forward testing also for some of the systems that i run so yeah I, i'm not i'm not seeing that as a major concern unless it may be like some sort of ai model or ml model where you're like trying to like capture something that doesn't really intuitively make sense yeah Yeah, maybe maybe because i moved away from this sometime in 2019 uh, when all the models that worked say, till mid 2018 slowly started given up around that time so um vivek and tony your thoughts on uh, the single stock portfolios So personally, I I agree with all the points that were made on survivorship bias. And personally, I'm I'm uh, very comfortable holding a large number of uh, stocks. Uh, in fact, I've not found too much performance degradation by holding um, like a large number of stocks. So I I, I prefer that um, yeah. sort of not to guess the winners uh, and just sort of treat it as like a as a subset of the market which is showing characteristics that i like and uh, the more the the more the better uh, i mean obviously taking that, liquidity that's what i agree with yeah, yeah. The, the larger your universe to select from one and the larger your universe that you're trading uh, the the smoother your returns is something i've observed too uh, can i ask a question to you guys so uh, if if you are uh, if you have a portfolio of x and your uh, universe is say y uh, if your portfolio goes to 2x would you increase your y uh, anyone please uh, could you repeat the question so question is let's say you have uh, one cr and uh, you have you have 100 stocks to choose from uh, if your portfolio goes to 2 cr would you increase your universe to 200 stocks something like that um i think like for me like uh, i guess like more practical constraints like liquidity is the starting point so i would only select stocks which are uh, above a certain liquidity because sometimes stocks have a lot of liquidity in volume when they're doing well and then you know it can it can die off uh after a few weeks or months so um so i i mean the investable universe it by itself is not that large right so uh, no so i'm i'm not restricting to just india right i mean uh, you could do the uh, practically like the entire world stocks right i mean would you consider running your model on Uh, you know a large number of international stocks i mean um, which have a much better kind of which gives a much better signal or would you look for something in india i mean running it on a different cap uh, cap size or something like that i mean uh, that's that's my question basically so at what point do you decide that you just can't do it from um, in the cash market of india and like you you would need more markets and you would go global basically i think uh, if you are trying to do an an approach that is more trend following then if you restrict yourself just to equities in india then pretty much everything is going to be uh, you know correlated to each other so uh, an approach like trend following needs uh, uncorrelated asset classes so i know a lot of people do trend following and then they are doing it only on bank nifty i mean that, that that's really not trend following it's sort of applying certain entry exit rules on the spa- phase space of bank nifty market price action so uh, i think from a if somebody wants to do trend following then you you do want multiple asset classes that have very low correlation to each other but 
uh, of course, uh, it, I mean, the, I think the the logistics of uh, actually implementation of this is not very easy if you are uh, if you are an investor in India. Uh, is it worth the pain? I mean, you know, ultimately, if you are trying to catch some kind of an outlier, uh, I mean, would you rather do a 0.5% investment on 200 stocks than do a 1% on 100 stocks? I mean, very simply speaking. Yeah, th there is quite a bit of literature on that right i mean there uh, isn't i mean that number is somewhere around that 25 30 see i i guess it's it's a it's a question of what risk you're trying to diversify away right and uh, the the single stock risk is sort of well diversified away once you get to that 25 30 number or you know even beyond 30 i guess but if you are looking at diversifying market risk away then uh, then you have to uh, include other markets you have to include alternate uh, markets out there so yeah i don't know if that answers the question though yeah, sure thanks uh, any other thoughts here on this yeah i guess uh, beyond a point like the number of stocks would start uh, hurting right so i guess you should have some sort of a limit especially uh, um it depends also how many like sort of strong stocks are there in each market. So if you have a large number of stocks that are displaying a lot of like of the parameters that you're looking for, then it's possibly better to increase the number a little bit. But I'm I'm guessing like it's very specific to each data set that you're like trying to sort of uh, test on, right? Like so, it's going to be very specific to the scenario that you're looking at. So which market? How many markets? Uh, yeah. So, so if I factor. if I if I may quantify the question a bit more, uh, so what I'm asking is like, let's say you are running a momentum strat, right? On and you're uh, you're running it on 15. So you select the top 15 and you invest on that, right? I mean, very simply. I mean, I'm not going into uh, complications. Would you rather do that in one market, or you would do five, five, five in three different markets? Let's say you do Australian equities, you do. U.S. equities and Indian equities, right? So that's my question. Roy, can I ask a question on this? Like, are you assuming slippages and other, uh, you know, uh, liquidity factors as a constant, or is that included in the question? Let's say, let's say it's included. Let's say, let's say I'm assuming that it's normalized across markets. No, no, not across markets, but uh, uh, for that 15 stocks, let's say I have a crore rupees and I've invested in that 15 stocks and the slippages is, let's say, 1%. If I invest 2 crores in the same stocks, then the slippage is like 3% or 4%. So are you assuming, means is that slippage 1% constant or will it increase with capital? Uh, yeah, probably that's a little more complicated for my question, but my question is very simple. I mean, yeah. would I rather say... Let, let me try and let me try and answer that. If I were to try and build a portfolio across markets in that way, I would not bucket... Uh, the capital into each of those markets, but I would uh, treat all all the stocks in all of those markets as my universe. So uh, I guess the, what I'm trying to say is that if I have 100 rupees and I have five potential markets that I'm looking at, I would not I would not put in 20 in each market. Uh, and you know I would I would rather say that okay, all those five markets, each of them have got 100 stocks, so my universe is 500, and I would apply momentum across that 500 basket and then choose the top 20. So if if it lands up that all of those 20 stocks are Australian stocks, then so be it. doesn't matter. Uh, I think that would be my approach. Hello. Yeah, I would also normalize the momentum for currency, right? So it should be measured in the same currency across. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Guys, am I audible? Yes, yes, behind you are. Uh, so my my two cents or my understanding of Roy Sir's question and uh, my thought on it is that his question basically is asking whether geography of the I mean, geography of the market that you're trading is a factor that you consider because I mean, kuch logon ke liye geographical diversification is itself a and geography is a market uh, is a risk factor that they would want to diversify away. So, 
एंड हम ज्यूमिंग यहाँ पे हम जो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कंस्ट्रेंट एंड ऑल दैट साइड वेर डिस्कसिंग की इज इट वर्थ जस्ट ट्रेडिंग फिफ्टीन स्टॉक्स इन द इंडियन मार्केट और ट्रेडिंग यू नो फाइव स्टॉक्स ईच इन इंडिया ऑस्ट्रेलिया इन द यूएस तो वहां पे आई थिंक वॉट रियली मैटर्स इज की आप जियोग्राफी का रिस्क फैक्टर इन करना चाहते भी हो कि नहीं मे बी आप चाहते ही हो कि भाई मैं इंडिया की मार्केट से मुझे एक्सपोजर चाहिए और मुझे ये जो काम है वो इंडिया में ही करना है क्योंकि इंडिया का द ग्रोथ स्टोरी फॉर द नेक्स्ट वट एवर इज द बेस्ट बट इफ दैट इज नॉट द केस इफ यू नो सच क्वालिटेटिव और क्वान्टिटेटिव बायस टूवर्ड्स जस्ट हैविंग अ पर्टिकुलर मार्केट देन द क्वान्ट अप्रोच वुड से भाई डाइवर्सिफाई और यू नो हैज अ वे एनी काइंड ऑफ रिस्क दैट यू कैन आइडेंटिफाई एनी risk factor that you can and geography can be considered one of it so that would be my or at least that's my understanding and i could just be talking shit thanks vian pallu speak man oh no man you guys making good points <laughs> Well, let's see. Uh, I think with if it's a momentum portfolio i think i'd go with what prashant said like it shouldn't matter Like geography shouldn't be a factor, right? Uh, you have to be long a specific country if that country stocks are going up, and that's what momentum should do. So if you increase your universe to include all the countries, then it's doing its job. Uh, but I'm I'm not a momentum guy. I'm more like a value guy. So the way I see it is, after a certain size, you start to think about actual country risk. Um, you don't want to like hundred percent believe in Modi ji. Right, anything can happen. Like country governments also fall. Uh, this is not like create panic, but this is like real thing. So you start thinking in those terms, and uh, you see tech companies in US doing so well, and you think I'll just start diverse friend. So that's kind of how I start to think. Just in terms of, I don't want to be like having only one kind of risk in my portfolio. So if you talk about one stock, you're saying. i'm going to absorb all the risk that this stock will give me and your size increases you start to think okay i'm absorbing more kinds of risks right and if it's one stock and it's just one volatility then you want to like think in terms of shark so you add more stocks in so you get the volatility down then you think about again country risk uh, you diverse for that way so i think that's how you know as your aum increases start thinking more risks and uh, think shit <laughs> फंडामेंटलिंग लाइक दैट let's say you have clean data or something so would would you like to add moment value into your momentum strategies uh, ashtoj if i can just uh, request that let's let's see if there are other people who have some thoughts on single stock portfolios before we jump jump topics to momentum value for anatikana <laughs> sure i don't know just yeah. just a thought <laughs> maybe yeah. there's some maybe there's some uh, some maybe somebody over here will support your thesis of a single stock portfolio i think <laughs> so far everybody is like this dissing it yeah i i need a supporter i guess i guess i can engage roy on this uh she'll come i i support the single stock portfolio thing i was going to go ahead ajao ajao no i don't support oh please, you support it then you can please yeah yeah go please go ahead man my beer on me ha my my again man i wasn't there when that discussion was happening i joined very late but my understanding is the thesis is See, at times it makes sense to just go all in on a single stock, right? No, no, no. Is not that... at times. Not at times. Uh, hmm. His idea, his thesis was always, uh, always single stock. Always concentration. Single stock, two stocks, three stocks, whatever doesn't matter. That's as good as single stock. So, yeah. Huh. My my take on that, and I I actually agree with the uh, what do you say the fundamental idea itself. See, it makes sense to go all in. बट दैट इज कैट मतलब उसका कैवियाट ये है कि वहां पर जो मेरा एज है सो टू स्पीक वो इन्फॉर्मेशन का होना चाहिए वो मतलब डिस्टिंग एज इन्फॉर्मेशन का मुझे पता होना चाहिए जो आई थिंक वेन आई ज्वाइन 
आशुतोष सर वो टॉकिंग अबाउट सम फ्रेंड ऑफ हिज जिसको आई थिंक एथेनॉल या किसी चीज की समझ थी आशुतोष सर मैं सही समझ रहा हूं आपका कोई हां भाई फ्रेंड था यार हां हां तो आपका जो वो फ्रेंड था जिसको जैसे एथेनॉल की समझ थी एंड यू नो ही प्रोबब्ली वेंट ऑन एंड ऑन समथिंग लाइक दैट एंड अगर मुझे ऐसी सिमिलर किसी एक स्पेसिफिक इंडस्ट्री या कंपनी की अगेन वहां पे जनरल क्वेश्चन में कम्स इनसाइडर है नहीं है दैट थिंग असाइड अगर मेरे पास डिस्टिंक्ट इंफॉर्मेशन एडवांटेज है किसी चीज में एंड द सेम आई एक्सटेंड टू इवन बिजनेस कि भाई अगर मुझे किसी पे पैसा लगाना है मैं अपने बिजनेस पे लगाऊंगा क्योंकि मुझे अपने बिजनेस का मतलब प्रोजेक्टरी फंक्शनिंग सब कुछ सबसे अच्छे से पता तो दैट सेम आर्ग्यूमेंट कुड बी एक्सटेंडेड टू एनी कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड पोर्टफोलियो स्टॉक्स ऑल्सो अगर आपके पास वो इंफॉर्मेशन एज है अगर आपकी एज स्टिस्टिकल है विच मोस्ट पीपल लाइक जो मोमेंटम इन्वेस्टिंग कर रहे हैं या जो अपन जैसे ट्रेडिंग कर रहे हैं इन दैट केस सच अ प्ले वुड मेक सेंस बिकॉज वहां पे फिर वो सारा लॉ ऑफ लार्ज नंबर और वो सारी कहानी शुरू हो जाएगी कि भाई यू वॉन्ट टू मैक्सिमाइज द टाइम योर इन द गेम तो आपका नेचर ऑफ एज इन दिस केस विल प्रॉब्ली डिफाइंड वेदर गोइंग ऑल इन मेक सेंस और इट डज सो दैट वुड बी माई बट भाई भाई प्रॉब्लम प्रॉब्लम ये है कि हर एक को लगता है कि उसके पास इन्फॉर्मेशन एज है डर्निंग exactly. रूबर ने तो बताया ना कि भाई सबको तो लगता है कि वही भगवान है तो वो वो कैसे सॉल्व करने का वैल्यू इन्वेस्टिंग क्लास एनी वैल्यू इन्वेस्टिंग क्लास एनी बैंक वैल्यू इन्वेस्टिंग क्लास दिल टेल यू दिस दैट यू ऑलवेज है बायस दैट यू आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ यू ऑलवेज है सर्कल ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस यू कान गो बी ऑफ सो आफ्टर पॉइंट यू स्टार्टिंग टू आस्क like do, do i really want to go all in on just this one thing and like i know so much about it that nobody else in the world does and that risk is going to pay me off like 10x is it worth it like putting your life on the line for that that's the question i my again i know somebody who who made a very similar kind of bet because unka wo information as tha and unhone 3 digit crore mein paisa lagaya aur wo 4 digit crore ho gaya 3 6 mahine ke andar Yeah, but did you I'll, also find the people who put in the money and have lost it and have stopped talking? That's the question. That's the side. So, so I was surprised again, to talk about that. Ah, uh, मतलब हाँ देखो वो तो I fully agree. I'm I'm not saying that this is the way to go. अब हो सकत अब वहाँ पे आपका circle of competence वाला जो आपने argument raise किया है, then that turns into self awareness exercise की how uh, legit is your evaluation of your competence and it's and the circle of competence, right? अगर आप सच में बहुत कॉम्पिटेंट हो आपके पास वो इन्फॉर्मेशन एज है और आप फोड़ रहे हो तो बल्ले मतलब सब तालियां हो जाएंगे अगर आप वही तो क्या उन्होंने क्या नहीं किया उन्होंने एक स्टॉक पे पंट नहीं किया ना ऐसा है उनको पास भी है तो सर्कल ऑफ कॉम्पिटेंस हमारे पास भी तो नहीं है सर आई एम प्रीटी शोर वॉरन बफेट का पहले ही मतलब अब हो सकता है बिकॉज ऑफ द स्केल इट्स अ डिफरेंट स्टोरी बट इफ आई एम नॉट अगेन आई कुड बी रॉन्ग बट फ्रॉम वट आई रिमेम्बर ऑफ रीडिंग अबाउट वॉर एंड बफेट सक्सेस उनके जो वो बिग जम्स इन परफॉर्मेंस एंड नेटवर्क टाइप थे वो सारे होते थे इन वेरी कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड बैट्स आई कुड बी रॉन्ग मैं and if you look at his history there was a point in time in which he had to dissolve the partnership because he didn't get any bets to make on the market he basically told his people invest in these funds these are the bond funds they'll do well for the next few years i can't do investing anymore so um so that that is why you got to give people like him some credit because at some level they say this is my limitation and i'm not going to test it and they stop and we got to ask ourselves what is my personal limitation so that i don't push it too hard and possibly grow broke right that's the kind of thinking process that investors need to have got it and again from what i remember unka wo bhi tha ki bhai i don't understand tech i don't get into that i get into brands and cash flow businesses aisa kuch bhi funda tha that if i'm not wrong theek hai yaar matlab 70 80 years ka hai thoda to maaf kar do prashant can i can i bring in a different perspective i'll, I'll try not to not to digress much but like uh, let's say Uh, coming back to Ashutosh's question of two three portfolio, two three guys, right? So let's let's say there's an entrepreneur, right? I mean, who has listed his stock or number two employee or third employee of the of the startup who who are by design, uh, you know, long one stock, right? 
I mean, what should that person do? Uh, should should he? So the question is, should he diversify away the risk? Because it's kind of an emotional question. You can't ask the guy to buy put off his own company, right? I mean that that's kind of he'll not do it. I mean he'll kind of <laughs> throw you out of the room, right? But but my question is like, uh, what should be the approach for that guy? I mean, suppose you were to kind of advise him, right? Uh, who who is long a stock uh, his own company and like he has IPO'd and he's now sitting on chunks of. Uh, his portfolio is sitting on just one stock. I mean, uh, so so uh, would would diversification be a bet? Because he would know his company the best, but he can't predict the future, right? What's going to happen? Mm, probably should That's you know go and ask for Nike's IPO allocation. If anyone got the joke. Okay. Okay. Anyways, we hand by uh, cigar on me next time. <laughs> Whenever we meet, like. Uh, Prashant, Darn, you want comment on that? Uh, sorry. Uh, I mean, I, I, I would. I, uh, I, I really don't have a, uh, uh, a ready answer on that. But I, what I will say is that uh, through my my own career, I've tried not to whole stock of the company that I've been working for. So that's just, I guess, a short answer. But any, anybody else who wants to chime in is, yeah. yeah hi, everybody. Yeah, Santosh. Yeah. Uh, this is a shout out to Prashant. Uh, I don't know if he's here. Uh, I think he exited. Um, it was 10 years ago I met him and uh, he used to run a Yahoo group, uh, investor group. I don't know how many of you know. Uh, and the thoughts that he used to uh, share those days and the thoughts he just shared a while ago here are still the same. And that's very rare to uh, be seen in a, a trader or an investor um, in, in many of the groups. Right? So... Uh, I, I wish he continues to uh, keep sharing the, uh, the thoughts, the knowledge he has garnered over the years. Um, and uh, coming to the topic that you were talking about, so tomorrow, in case if the current government goes and a different government comes and sits in Delhi as in a national politics, I don't think so. They will immediately bring problems to Adani or Ambani. So, it would be fair to go with a group rather than a single stock. So, I think it is better to stick with Adani groups and go on. They will make peace with Congress, even if Congress comes to power. They will make peace with Nitish, if it comes to power third print or whatever print. Right? So... Adani or Ambani, that, that that will perfectly make sense, is what I feel. If you are conservative, you can go with someone like Kotak and Mahindra's, all these kind of groups. I'm just giving a vague example. Uh, sticking to a particular stock may not be helpful. See, uh, Reliance Industries may perform or may not perform in future, but Joe is definitely going to perform, right? So there is no alternative to data. So a big group will always do something to stay in the top. And there is analysis that shows that, you know, top 10 companies continue to keep performing well, right? And in that first two, three companies will continue to keep doing well. And they are always the, uh, you know, biggest positions in all the mutual fund houses, if you see, right? So your point definitely is valid, I feel. But why stick to only one stock? Just why that one number? Instead, you can focus on to that particular group. It's the brain being in that own group, right? So that's what you had to bet on, not just a single story, right? So that's just my opinion. Huh? Thank you. Thank you, Satosh. Uh, Santosh. Uh, yeah, I think uh, quite a few people echo your thoughts on Prashant Krish and all the work he's done over the last decade. So thanks for that. Uh, he's, I don't know if he's in the room, but uh, appreciate your comments. Um, Fact Finder, you have some something to add for us? Please go ahead. Hey man, sorry, I, I just joined in, uh, you know, 10 minutes ago, so I actually missed uh, a great deal of what you guys are speaking. 
but uh, let me just tell you, uh, I mean, let me first comment on uh, uh, what the previous guy said. I think there is a bias out here because uh, you know the the point is uh, you you could have several groups that didn't perform um, and even Reliance uh, right from 2008 uh, all the way till 2000 uh, you know 16 did not perform at all right uh, and you could have betted on that group and said you know what they will manage things right uh, let, let's say okay I think the most important thing I've done tremendous analysis. Uh, I'll give you a little background of myself. I'm an institutional guy, um, but uh, and I've you know been doing institutional stuff for the last uh, 17 years. Uh, and uh, uh, my understanding was uh, all of this um, with regard to Adani Group has been planned years in advance. Okay, um, and this is not a surprise to me, and I expect at least six stocks of Adani to be in the Nifty. Okay. Now, as far as India is concerned, and, and okay, I'll, I'll give you another background of myself. I, I invest across markets. Uh, I go long. I go short. I, I do equities. I do uh, fixed income. I do uh, currencies. Uh, India, obviously, you know, since my hometown, um, pretty much um, uh, something that I really, uh, you know, spend a lot more time on. India is a very uh, a rig rigged market, and I think the discussion. So, so I, I have, I, as I said, I have, I have missed the entire discussion. But let, let me just tell you a couple of things. India is a very rigged market. Uh, MSCI's entire team, back office for the world, sits in Mumbai. Okay, there's a lot of leakage that goes on. Okay, uh, as far as the point of you know why we all discussing about whether one or two stocks work is simply because I think. A fair bit of, uh, I, th I think the discussion is uh, revolves around Rakesh Junjunwal. And I think the entire comparison that was put out today was incorrect when comparing it to a lot of other uh, portfolio managers like a Warren Buffett or something like that. Because Warren Buffett, for instance, I, I think when you compare portfolio managers and performance, uh, you have to look at risk adjusted, right? Sharp ratio. The question you got to ask yourself is, was the sharp ratio of Rakesh Junjunwala's performance that good? And I don't know about that. You also look at uh, several uh, parameters uh, as far as concentration risk. Then, you, uh, then I was just looking at Titan in Industries, right, which is uh, the biggest performer for him, right, apart from Tata as, as well. Uh, Titan Industries, by the way, uh, in the last five years, has had a sales growth of only 16%. Now, now keep this number in mind, 16% growth. Gold prices are up 11% Kager in the last five years. And he would have obviously opened up a lot of, uh, you know, he, he's expanded dramatically. So if one were to really drill down into the performance of Titan as a company, they've actually had negative volume growth all these years. Okay? And... If you were to give that these numbers to somebody and you say, you know, what kind of a valuation you did expect, you wouldn't expect this company's multiples to expand. Now, I know why Titan is, uh, uh, you know, pushed up a lot. You take any institutional investor for the last five years and look at them in total. Institutional investors for, were forever negative and underweight Titan. Nobody really owned the stock. And then, as somebody had mentioned, I think in 2018, a lot of models start, didn't start uh, stopped working, uh, quant models. And the reason that happened was that's when ETFs in India took off in a massive way. I'll give you a very interesting example. Back in 2017, Hindustan Unilever was a stock which was expensive and the company was not performing that well. You would talk to any institutional investor uh, who looks at India and they would tell you that... Uh, you know, Unilever is a shit company. It's not that great at growth. This, and so we don't own the stock. It's an underperformer. And guess what? The stock would still perform. So I went and drilled down into why, who was really buying, uh, you know, Unilever in India and trying to understand. Because if every institutional investor is saying they, they don't like the company. Uh, and so can, can I just say, not to be the bad guy here, but can we just uh, focus on the topic too? Because it seems like we're going off in like so many tangents here. Okay, um, fine. So the the point, topic is about whether to hold the single stock portfolio. So maybe you can give a view on, was it good to hold Titan considering it had this kind of growth? Maybe you can talk in that oh, direction at least. My yeah. point is that my point is that we're looking at a case out here where the Indian market is almost largely rigged. Okay. 
I was telling you about a company like Hindustan Unilever, which is generally considered fairly liquid. Okay, that stock's multiple kept going up all the way from 2017 onwards. I tried to figure out who, which institutional investor was buying this, and it discovered there were two. There was LIC, and there was uh, uh, EPFO, who was putting in. Remember, if you all recall, EPFO started putting in money starting 2017 onwards, starting Jan. So my my point I'm trying to tell you is that when there are stocks which are consensus underweight and there is ETF money or coming into the market, it, it, by it, it creates a vicious cycle and that keeps performing and that makes people wonder, wow, this company is doing well when actually the performance of the business might not really add up to the stock performance. India is a very illiquid market doing analysis on, around this saying this one stock will do well, in my view, doesn't really work out. Um, so you're so making a case for diversified I, momentum portfolios, right? No, actually, actually, actually the other way, right? I mean, if, if, uh, with his comments, he's saying that your single... Um, Tony, could you, could you just mute for a second? Uh, thanks. Uh, so the fact finder, I was just... I'm just wondering uh, if you attribute... Uh, the inclusion of a particular stock to an index uh, as uh, a driver towards returns for that stock, then are you trying? Are you would you say that that's also a case for actually finding and trying to front run indices and allocating a large portion? You know, whether it's hundred percent or it's uh, a majority of your uh, portfolio to those stocks that are getting included in the index. I mean, are you are you seeing data that that uh, supports that. absolutely Prashant absolutely and I'll give you an example right I, I did I, I did an index for the stocks which Access Mutual Fund was buying okay I looked at all the holdings of Access Mutual Fund and found out which are the stocks where they hold 70 to 80 percent of the entire mutual fund industry and these are not small stocks I was talking about the top 50 stocks in India or top 70 stocks in India Okay, and it did this analysis for also some of the other mutual funds where they hold at least sixty to seventy percent, or maybe fifty percent. One single mutual fund holds at least fifty percent. If and Access was obviously a very specific case where they held sixty to seventy, seventy-five percent of the entire mutual fund industry, right? And I just made a portfolio of that stock. Was essentially what was happening is that these were just getting uh, rigged because. Uh, and these guys were get, uh, using the buying to push the stock into the index. I mean, index rigging in India is in an insane level at this point of time. And I've, I've been tracking this for the last 12 years. So you're not, your point is not so much that it uh, the stock uh, moves after it gets into the index. Your point is that it is being moved for it to get into the index. Is that what the point you're trying to make? A hundred percent. Okay. Um, the, the only thing is that it's it's very difficult to uh, falsify what what you're describing, right? So I guess um, okay. several, I'll, yeah. tell, I'll tell you, as I said, right, I work in an institutional side, right? Uh, there are billions of dollars just predicting this and actually acting on this in India. Not ah, in of India. course, I yeah, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disputing that. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, so, fact finder, can I ask you something? I mean, uh, if, if if you were, uh, so there's a difference between somebody managing his personal portfolio and like somebody managing institutional money, right? So, as a guy managing his personal portfolio, I mean, would you try to optimize your sharp ratio or would you try to optimize your uh, terminal wealth? I agree with you. Uh, I would optimize my terminal wealth. So the way I have looked at things is I would invest my money in a mutual fund. But if there are those five stocks where I think I have the maximum conviction, that's where I would allocate money. Because my simple thesis is, and this is something that I learned from Prashant Jain, is like, if you choose your first stock, it's your top idea. If you choose your 10th stock, it's your 10th idea. If you choose your 20th stock, it's your 20th best idea. So you would typically, I, I, I kind of agree in some sort of sense that you should uh, probably choose your top five or seven ideas. 
and the rest in the mutual portfolio. Okay, so basically, to summarize, you mean like you are in favor of a single stock or a highly concentrated. I would go for a, go for a single stock. There's too much risk, right? I mean, yeah. So two two stocks, three stocks, or four stocks, right? Yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, I think it's talking more like a core and a satellite kind of an approach where the core is your mutual fund and then you have some money where you allocate in uh, something which you have high conviction in. Uh, yeah. Uh, but in that, I he's that. talking of a lovely approach about conviction, though. <laughs> <laughs> lol, lol, lol. <laughs> But uh, fact, fact finder, in that case also, let's say you are long banking, you have two stocks from banking sector and you also have a mutual fund and the mutual fund also have, let's say, 25-30% into banking. So effectively, you have your 50% allocation into banking sector, right? Isn't it similar to a single stock or a highly concentrated portfolio? No, uh, Ashutosh, so, so, so you're right. Uh, just let me put it this way, right? Uh, if you... I, I believe that, uh, you know, it's very, in a very, um, uh, in, in a prop, oh, I, I don't have the words for it. I, it's, it's not going through my head right now. Basically, in, in, in a, uh, let me come back. I'll answer your question. Sorry, I, I need to get that word. Sure, sure. No problem. Okay, so I have another question uh, uh, along the lines of, okay, so if you are looking at optimizing for terminal wealth, then um, you you would want to be able to pick that uh, few stocks that will you don't care about sharp, you don't care about standard deviation, you can you don't care about drawdowns, you care about terminal wealth. But um, are there things that you can do uh, on the way to getting that terminal wealth that will uh, improve your uh, uh, possibilities of getting of holding on to those those five stocks that you have or three stocks or two stocks that get you to the terminal wealth? Good question, Prashant. I guess this is the basic premise of this entire discussion. Prashant, can I add something over here? Okay. Please, uh, the open question. Yeah, no, yeah. So I, I, I just tell you one thing, okay? Index is now becoming so important and I'll give you a very good example that I've given on several spaces. I'll take the example of a super liquid stock. Two examples. One is Amazon and the second is Tesla. Tesla got added to the S&P 500 sometime, I think the announcement was in July, August of 2020. I think the stock was $350, $360 at that point of time. It was supposed to be added by... Uh, I think November, December, November end, 2020. So about four five months. Between as soon as it got added, till the time it was added, the stock went up from three fifty dollars all the way to about eight fifty nine hundred dollars. There was no fundamental change in the company. In fact, I think they missed numbers. Okay, uh, so I'll take an example of uh, Amazon. Amazon. And this was a very interesting, if you guys can search for this, it's Horizon Analytics or Horizon Asset Management. They had come out with an analysis of this. This is the first time I actually started realizing it in a massive way. They did an analysis on Amazon. And they basically said that 70% of Amazon stock, this was sometime in, I think, June, July, August 2020, 70% of Amazon's float was held by ETFs. And the basic issue with ETFs is that they don't buy or sell based on valuations. They don't even have a concept of, you know, buy the dip or sell the, the top, right? Uh, and when you have companies like Amazon, where so much of the float is held by ETFs, it just makes it extremely uh, volatile, which is one of the things. Uh, so so, so it's, today it's extremely important when, I, uh, when you speak to other institutional investors and you exchange ideas. I'll give you an example, Varun Beverages, okay? <laughs> it was one of my top ideas in Jan, okay, because I knew that the stock had to go 25% and then, or 30%, and then it'll enter the, so Varun Beverages has not entered the uh, MSCI. It was supposed to enter in May. It missed out by a whisker, okay? 
but it in my view it's going to enter in the november msci rebalance and you see the stock going up like crazy so it's become a very important character when you do stock picking will this company grow well enough so that it reaches a market cap so that it enters the index so to your question prashant uh, would be i would not be kind of uh, comfortable you live only once right i mean i'm not comfortable uh, thinking that uh, only three stocks is going to make me rich or uh, like that right so my i i, I think again i mean I, i'm coming back to five fighters point of conviction it's the conviction of what uh, premise or what values you hold right in yourself i mean what what is the approach you take towards market my approach towards market is i know nothing uh, so that's my approach and i would like to diversify as much as possible i mean can be anything uh, can be a shit coin as well i don't care Uh, that's that's going to be my approach always i mean uh, where my fundamental premise is like i want to diversify as much as possible and uh, given given that the world has opened up uh, i mean you can practically invest in any country i mean why not look at look at the whole pie rather than just concentrating on india so that would be my approach okay so uh i guess guys let's summarize so that you know it's already 12 we all have training to do tomorrow uh, any any closing thoughts or anything else yeah anyone prashant vihan or uh, satrit salot or roy yeah i i don't care too much for the closing thoughts it's not a big conference man there's not a stage or anything it's a discussion among friends so <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. Hey, but great discussion, guys. I think it was uh, it was fun. Absolutely. Yellow man, yellow. Point That's my closing thought. But I'm gonna research more on the single stock portfolio thing. <laughs> may may not be single stock, but yeah, maybe a single sector or maybe two sectors kind of thing. The, the idea looks uh, interesting to me. Ah, तुमको fat fan ने तो hints दे दिए भाई. Look for stocks that are entering large indices. मैं तो वरुण बेवरेजेस खरीद लिया हूँ. मैं ऑर्डर डाल दिया कल की डिस्कलेमर्स Also, uh, fact finder, could you please open your DMs so we could uh, DM you? Ah, uh, एक और वरुण बेवरेज चाहिए नहीं? Yeah, I'm not sure he's still in the room. Your features are going to change, man, Tony. What what is Tony up to nowadays? Still uh, working on protein folding or what? <laughs> no, dude. Nine twenty or nine twenty one per research chala. Arey, to Tony do some alpha leak. Uh, share share something with us. Kal kal kya lena hai? Kal market kya rahega? Anything? Okay, on that note, I think we should end this process. <laughs> maybe we can front run you kitne baje ka start hai 920 hoga to maybe we'll put an order at 19 or something Ma- at a minute is too macro man i mean like we are living in the kind of picosecond kind of env- uh, world right i mean minute is look looks like a gigantic number now 
yeah I, I, it's uh, it's pretty insane uh, the kind of the kind of aum that is chasing these stop loss based option hey honestly rates. is there any alpha in this like i I've, i've thought long and hard about it and i can't wrap my head behind all this straddle thing like 920 kuch bhi bech do sab mein paisa ban raha hai like is is it is it really happening it's it comes down to your uh, your 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 original question right survivorship bias jo paisa bana raha hai wo wo uske bare mein bol raha hai but i uh, see uh, think about what the stat- what this strategy is doing it's essentially just a breakout strategy uh if they, you know if you if you you don't have to trade it through options you can just trade it through futures essentially it's an orb strategy uh you're you're taking a neutral position and when the market moves you're beyond a certain point you're you're trading in the direction of the market so it it's it's not a it's not a it's not rocket science for i mean it's just a orb kind of strategy out here that that's the play out once in that strategy like if i start running it tomorrow will it make money for me that, that depends on how you run it right 9920 uh, if you start running an orb strategy tomorrow will it make money i mean that's I, what i mean that question but we have the backers report it's question is incomplete right if if i start running a moving average crossover tomorrow will it make me money i mean it's an, it's i mean it's an incomplete question there could be a certain space of moving averages that will make you money tomorrow but will it make money for you in the long term i don't know but 920 ema bhai 44 ema is the answer to that ha to 513 ema aur kya 35 ema aur 97 no 97 is not a prime number so 97 dr. is a prime sir. number dr sir kan yaar math fit ho gaye the dr sir main 720 strategy use kar lunga amit bhai good evening वेलकम तो डॉक्टर साहब मैं 720 स्ट्रेटजी यूज कर सकता हूं ना मेरा मेरे पास तो बहुत सारे रिजल्ट है उसके ये एक सिंपल आशु एक सिंपल चीज बोलता हूं आपका रिस्क कैपिटल हां बोलिए ना मत भाई उसके ऊपर आपकी स्ट्रेटजी डिपेंड करती है बाकी सब चीजें बेकार है आपके रिस्क कैपिटल आपको सूट करती है अरे उस, उसका उसका रिस्क कैपिटल उस उसका एपेटाइट है रिस्क भूल जाइए आप बताइए मतलब आप मेरे मजे ले रहे हो फ्री में डॉक्टर नहीं नहीं वही बोल रहा है वही बोल रहा है उसका एपेटाइट ही एपेटाइट है अब बताइए ना आशु सिंपल काम कर डॉक्टर साहब ने बोला ओआर भी यूज कर ओआर भी जिस तरफ ब्रेकआउट दे उसकी तरफ के उल्टे पुट बेस दे या कॉल बेस दे और उसके भी 500 पॉइंट ऊपर के कॉल पुट बेस दे 5 10 रुपए में बिकेगा वो 2 4 रुपए 5 रुपए जो दे वो पैसा घर पे लेके आ जाना there is a major there, there is a major systematic risk that is ongoing out here but marenge to sab marenge uske alawa nahi mere to simple strategy hai 15 minute ka high low dekh lo uske baad jo gaya aur aaj ke din mein kaisa hota hai ki jab bahut major gap up gap down hota hai to usme 1 minute ka candle use karo pehle 5 minute ke candle pe apna trade leke nikal jao agar apne favor mein chal raha hai to jo low hai ya jo high hai वो कैरी ऑन करते चलो ये कपिल जी ने सिखाया अपने को बहुत सिंपल चीज सिखाई कि ऐसा मेजर आता है ना जब टू एक्स थ्री एक्स का मूव हो जाता है जो एटीआर बीज दे वो ऐसा मूव आ जाए ना उस दिन वो ट्रेड लेके खत्म कर दो नथिंग मोर देन दैट बट आशुतोष अगर अगर एपेटाइट है तो फिर खिचखिचा क्यों रहे हो तुमको तो बैक टेस्ट तो तुमको दिख रहा है लोगों ने हजारों हजारों बैक टेस्ट किए हर मिनट पे हर पॉइंट वन परसेंट स्टॉप लॉस के बैक टेस्ट का पूरा टर्म स्ट्रक्चर मिल जाएगा सो फिर पूरा मिल जाएगा राइट 
from so including including days to expiry and i don't know moon signs and everything ashok tera jo basic uh, ye apna space ka hai na single stock portfolio uh, doctor sahab bhi jante rahenge aur bahut sare log jante rahenge they are people in gujarat they only trade reliance wo sirf reliance mein apni puri zindagi bita di trade karte hue reliance hai to unko zindagi mein kuch pata bhi nahi koi stock bhi hai listed matlab pata hai wo trade hi nahi karte वो सिर्फ रिलायंस दिन रात आधी रात कभी भी ट्रेड कर लेते थे सिर्फ रिलायंस रिलायंस और रिलायंस वो उनको पता है मोटा भाई ने हमें आज तक पैसा कमा कर दिया मोटा भाई ने हमें जिंदगी भर पैसा कमा कर दिया सो so, वो भी एक चीज चलती है बाजार कि अगर आपको किसी स्टॉक पर बिलीव है कोई फेथ है आप उस फेथ को कंटिन्यू करो ना फेथ कैसा हो गया कि आप एक फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप कोई भगवान को मान रहे हो वैसा आपको वो स्टॉक हो गया टॉपिक टॉपिक थोड़ा सा अलग है ओके okay, हम लोग यहाँ ट्रेड करने का बात नहीं कर रहे हैं स्टॉक को भी यार मोर लाइक इन्वेस्टमेंट लाइक छह महीने साल भर दो साल का इन्वेस्टमेंट का बात कर रहे हैं ना सिंगल स्टॉक पोर्टफोलियो हाँ मैं वही बोल रहा हूँ अरे लोगों ने ना आशु व्हाट स्टोरीज आए वर्ड हाँ सो वही सर्वाइवरशिप बायस है वही यहाँ पे रॉय एंड एवरी वन एल्स पॉइंटिंग आउट की ये सर्वाइवरशिप बायस है राइट लाइक जो मरे जिसने लेट से इस पे क्या नाम है कौन सा आई कंपनी था which tanked in 20 सत्यम 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 कंपनी हां सो अब जिसने सत्यम खरीद के रखा था उसका क्या हुआ ठीक है ना उसने उसने पैसा बनाया रहेगा कहीं को वो लेवल पे वो भी निकला रहेगा ना उसने उतना पैसा नहीं, बनाया नहीं निकला वही तो बात है ना एक दिन में तो जीरो हो गया अब वो सुजलॉन भी होता है यूनिटेक भी होता है ऐसी हजारों कंपनियां मिल जाएगी एटलीस्ट एक दिन में तो नहीं हुआ ना सुजलॉन में यू गॉट टाइम टू एग्जिट यूनिटेक में ठीक है फिफ्टी परसेंट एटी परसेंट कहीं ना कहीं तो निकले बट सत्यम वॉज लिटरली जीरो इन अ डे और लेट से लेमन ब्रदर्स जीरो इन अ डे सो एक सिंपल चीज पकड़ बाजार का एक सिंपल चीज पकड़ हर चीज अगर इंसान पकड़ पाता ना तो इंसान भगवान बन जाता है किसी के पास वो सिस्टम नहीं होता है कि उसको पकड़ सके जिसने पकड़ लिया उसने पैसा बना लिया वो उस टाइम आप क्या डिसीजन लिया I still remember एक निलेश निलेश सार सर जो है ना कोटक के जो म्यूचुअल फंड चलाते हैं उनका स्टेटमेंट था कि ही वॉज ऑन द स्क्रीन और ये अपने राजू साहब का स्टेटमेंट आया था वो डेस्क पे खड़े थे डेस्क जनरली है ना म्यूचुअल फंड में कैसा होता है कि दे डोंट गिव डायरेक्ट ऑर्डर तो उन्होंने ऑर्डर डायरेक्ट दिया अपने सी आई ओ को भी नहीं पूछा डायरेक्ट ऑर्डर दिया कि अपने पास कितने कि इतना है पूरा क्वान्टिटी एक सेकेंड में बोला कि पूरा बेच दे वो बोला सर सीआई को पूछना पड़ेगा बोला मैं फंड मैनेजर हूँ वो फंड मैनेजर है पूरा क्वांटिटी एक मिनट में उन्होंने बेच दिया मतलब जो भी भाव पे बिका सौ में बिका डेढ़ सौ में बिका जो भी भाव में बिका फॉर सत्यम वॉज ट्रेडिंग एट वन सेवेंटी फाइव दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम ट्रेडिंग सत्यम सो आई नो दैट तो नीलेश सर का जो स्टेटमेंट था ना अगर सुनोगे ना कभी तो उन्होंने बोला भाई मैंने डिसीजन ले लिया उसके बाद तो उसी दिन में ट्वेंटी फाइव आया नेक्स्ट डे सिक्स रुपीज गया ये मेरी आंखों के सामने की बात है तो वो डिसीजन मेकिंग चाहिए होता है आपको कि भैया आपको उस टाइम पे क्या डिसीजन लेना क्या नहीं लेना है आपको लग रहा है सामने फ्रॉड है ऐसा कुछ चल रहा है तो डिसीजन आपको लेना है उस टाइम आप कोई भरोसे पे नहीं बैठते अगर आप डिसीजन नहीं ले सकते तो भाई फिर तो भगवान मालिक है आपका बाजार में आए क्यों थे super amit bhai okay guys i'm out of here uh, thanks for everybody's comments once again disclaimer there's no investment advice or trading advice please don't a lot of this was in jest a lot of uh, the discussion was for our entertainment um, so take that uh, any of the discussion out here with a uh, with lots of salt and um, see you guys later bye Yeah bye bye thanks everyone for joining and participating bye bye good night